welcome to the SBP podcast, Mobile Filmmaking, the voice of mobile film. I'm your host, Susie Botello, and you're listening to episode 75. This episode of the SBP podcast brings you the perspective of current events with the coronavirus and how it's affecting the film festival industry. Our guest is Craig Prater. He's the president of Heartland Film and the Heartland Film International Film Festival, which is based in Indianapolis, Indiana. Heartland International Film Festival is one of the most popular film festivals in our country, but Craig has about 30 years in the industry of film festivals, and so I reached out to him for a quick conversation about how vi- how this particular virus is affecting film festivals around the world, really. Now, if you're a filmmaker, you may be interested in the topic because, well, since you're probably receiving notices of one or more film festival events that you'd planned on attending shutting down until further notice, I just thought it would be a good idea to share the perspective from the film festivals and how someone like Craig Prater uh, can share some light or add some light to the situation. Um, As frustrating as it is for all of us uh, during this time, there are many aspects of our lives that are being affected. And sometimes I just happen to think that it's helpful to be informed about how other industries and how other people are being affected by the same situation that we are. Uh, Or this particular one, we're just at such an unprecedented time in our, in our, in our world right now, in, in this part of our history. And so while this is not the end of the world, uh, well, we, we really need to consider how many people are at risk around the world and around us. Um, The audio in this episode is not so great, sort of did this kind of in a in a hurry um, and recording it on the phone. So it's not the best, but uh, nevertheless, it's a great, very informative uh, podcast with a wonderful guest. So uh, I'm sure you'll get a lot out of it. Um, Outside of that, let's go and let's get with it. Hey everybody, welcome. I have a really nice guest uh, with us. He's a good friend of mine, uh, Craig Prater. He is the president of Heartland Film and the Heartland International Film Festival since 2016. And so I'd like to uh, introduce you to Craig Prater so that we can discuss the state of the film industry at this current time here in March of 2020. Craig, how are you? I am fine, Susie. It is great to hear from you. Well, thank you. Uh, Craig, why don't you share with our listeners just a little bit about who you are and what you do? Well, Susie, uh, number one, I've been working in the film festival business for a little over 30 years now, so I guess that really dates me, but uh, uh, I've certainly worked with you a number of years, uh, so it's always great to hear from you and and learn what you're doing. But, yes, I've been working in the film festival business ever since... uh, I started in uh, 19, the early 90s with uh, Entertainer and Mayor of Palm Springs at the time, Sonny Bono. And so it's taken me all the way from those years to Bangkok, Thailand, to Cape Town, to a number of cities. And now I'm serving as the president of the Heartland Film Festival in Indianapolis, where we host, as you've already mentioned, the uh, Heartland International Film Festival. And now we've uh, into our third year of Heartland Films Indie Shorts, where we focus on just short films. So uh, a lot going on in Indianapolis. Craig, when you um, are noticing what's going on right now, have you ever even uh, seen anything like this anywhere before? Meaning the cancellations and all these things. 
Yes, it's. Um, I try to tell myself that uh, there's been a lot of bumps in, in the in the road down through the years. Um, but no, I've never seen anything quite like this. Um, I'm certainly been in contact with other film festivals and learning about their cancellations and their postponements. Um, and I, I, I tried to think down through the years, has there been anything even close to this? I'm afraid I would have to say, no, there hasn't. So we're all having to rethink how we do business, how we move forward, how we can keep our, you know, nonprofits alive. And, uh, I was, uh, on the line, uh, this, uh, this past Friday with all the cultural arts organizations in Indianapolis, we're all faced with the same challenges and it's, uh, it, it, and again, I guess I have to just say it's a challenge. I'm certain we're all going to get through it, but it's uh, it's monumental at times. You know, how would you um, consider the fact that, or or let me ask you this: How do you think any of the other film festivals are handling this from a film festival perspective? You know, what what are what is the impact for film festival events in itself? Um, that's even in itself, Susie, a complicated answer because depending upon the date of your film festival this year, that makes a difference on how film festivals even attempt to play out the scenario. Um, I'm hearing some of my associates with other film festivals, um, that have just basically because their film festival would be opening either now or in the next few weeks have just closed down permanently for the year. Uh, others are postponing with the hopes that they can pick it up and keep going. Um, we're lucky right now in that we've got a few months before our indie shorts, and then we've got uh, a number of months before our October uh, Heartland International. But with that, um, you're faced with if you postpone or reschedule, what does that do to your film submissions that are coming in right now? What, how do you plan your advertising and releasing that? You're faced with expenses that are ongoing with uh, just keeping your doors open and your staff uh, salaries and scheduling your volunteers. It's, um, it's, it's problematic just in a number of different ways. Yeah, because, you know, most film festivals, established film festivals anyways, have a specific date annually, which they, they plan for throughout the year and the filmmakers as well, that they're going to submit and, and go to these events and, and things like that at specific dates. So if you're unlucky enough, uh, like kind of like our film festival, to have it in April, right, for example, or even May uh, correctly, you know, it's, it's postponing it down the line, say this carries through September, October, November, it gets, it gets really hard, right? Yes, it does. And then, of course, it's like tipping over the domino. Everything starts tipping over when you make one decision that triggers something else. I mean, you just touched on something. We, we are faced with submissions coming in. Well, even if your submission process is finished, if you postpone or cancel, how does that affect the, the that submission process? And then if you've already confirmed films in your schedule, then how do you handle the filmmakers that are wanting to come in in support of their films and then, even if they decide to come on their own financially, uh, because the film festival is in, in a quandary as to whether you pay for their ticket and the expenses related, because there could be travel restrictions of filmmakers coming in uh, internationally. So it's it's problematic in a lot of different areas. Yeah, and the other thing now, it, this just kind of came up in my mind too, another thing is the fact that, you know, there's, there's all these people, well, it's, it didn't just come up. I mean, this has been a conversation, too, in the, in the actual event industry, how this affects everybody, the venues, the, the people, the restaurants in, in, in the area, hotels, all those things, right? Absolutely. Um, uh, and again, the, the discussion we had with all the cultural arts organizations, nonprofits in Indianapolis on Friday, um, uh, y your heart goes out to some of the people you think, well, we've got it rough, but sometimes others have got it worse because the, the, the people working in the restaurants and the hotels, the, the, the hourly paid people, then that triggers down to if they are laid off or, uh, or people are not coming to the restaurants, uh, it, it, 
where, where does that leave the family support and uh, your income coming in and um, the daycare centers for your children? It's just it's just um, it's a uh, uh, monumental at best. Yeah, I remember when uh, oh, so our listeners should know uh, Greg invited me a couple years ago. I think it was in 2018. Uh, wasn't that when you first had indie shorts? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I remember um, I was talking to just people at the airport, people who work at the airport, and they were praising the your film festival uh, as it being the biggest thing outside of the Indy 500s in their community. Well, that's true. Of course, everybody associates Indianapolis with the Indy 500, but uh, we've certainly made our mark in the city as a uh, one of the major cultural events because um, our our last study was that we made an impact of uh, a little over three point six million dollars a year over our ten day event. Uh, the impact that we have on the city financially. So, um, of course, then that again is part of that domino effect now with everything happening because that can affect uh, uh, the the success of the film festival can affect then what kind of an impact we make financially on the city and you know we're. We're sorry for that, too, but we're all in the same boat. Yeah, it's true. And I I think a lot of people um, also don't understand the impact the entertainment industry and film festivals like this have for the filmmaking and art community locally in their own communities, just bringing people together. Do you mind elaborating on that? Because I know you and I share this, um, this perspective. Well, um, a- abs- absolutely, because uh, when our film festival, when we're gearing up for our film festival and scheduling um, all the components of a film festival and happens, we um, certainly, um, not only are we selling tickets to the community and to visitors coming into town to see films that they would not ever see before, but then they go out to eat in restaurants, and that make- has an impact on the restaurants. They're staying in the hotel every day. They're wanting to take tours of the city. So um the impact that we make with just uh tourism coming tourism coming into the city uh and how it affects the the industry here in indianapolis it makes a big difference yeah it certainly does um craig one more one more question i know i don't want to take a a lot of your time today this is sort of your day off uh, before a busy week um, but I want to now, ta- Susie, you know, you, you know the film festival people. That means you two don't even know what days off that you got that, don't you? <laughs> yes, I know. Well, for me, I'm I I never really take a day off, or my mind doesn't either. <laughs> um, no, I hear you. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you what is are some of the things that other film festivals are doing to overcome and that you plan to do to overcome the possibility even of having to uh, deal with this, like if it impacts them, outside of canceling and Um, postponing. Right. And that's been uh, everybody at this point. The majority of people, if given the opportunity because of the dates of their film festival, they are attempting to postpone because there's so many unknowns right now as to what's happening because – um, as we discussed with our staff, everything's changing. And not we used, to, we used to say it was changing on a daily basis. I, I believe yesterday I had three changes regarding things happening in the city and, and, and direction that we were being given almost like on an hourly basis. We couldn't even keep up with advising people. Um, but, yes, um, if people are even planning to continue, they've got to consider, well, if it does take place, if our event does continue and move forward are we prepared to follow the rules and regulations stipulated by social distancing um being in crowds uh, and then we know the attendance could be affected sponsorships donors uh, memberships are all being affected so how are we planning to cut back on our expenses and finances without visually uh, affecting the event as to its quality so uh, and you, you're just considering a lot of different things, but um, um, we've all got similar problems and things facing us right now, and I think we're all just struggling to hopefully make the best decision possible, knowing that tomorrow could change even your decisions that you're making today. 
Yeah, and I think it's, um, you know, uh, for all the filmmakers and everyone who is going to participate in one of these film festivals that's being affected by this, um, this is hard on everybody um, from, you know, from the artist perspective, the, the industry, the, you know, what you were talking about before, even, even people who come as guests to your film festival. But this is really, really hard and it hits hard to film festivals big and small um themselves because you know like we were just talking about the these questions that you have these are all things that have to be considered and it's very costly yes 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 because you're faced with the expenses even if the result is you have to cancel or postpone you still got that expense so then you're you're faced with that expense or deciding do not incur that expense if you have that opportunity or luxury, knowing it may be in vain later on. So you're you're just it's a roll of the dice right now from day to day. Yeah, and for smaller film festivals, quite honestly, or who don't have big donors or big sponsors, or even sponsors who are also affected by this economically, um, this could really bring us down, huh? Um, yes, but and Susie, what I would add to that comment that you just made is it affects um, not only smaller film festivals, but all the medium and large festivals, too, because everything is relevant, because um, uh, you, uh, we consider ourselves a medium-sized film festival, but that just means are people going to continue to consider coming and supporting through sponsorships and donors and memberships? Uh, so it it's it, it's it's really a, a challenge all the way around for all sizes of film festivals. I can I I think also the you know just coming from an attendee perspective, just physically going to events. Do you think? And this is more of a personal exp, um, opinion for you, but do you think the events industry is going to adapt to this or change because of this? in the future um i think right now there's so much unknowns as, as i try to visualize the future of what we might do what the industry might be forced to do to change um i think there, it, there's so many unknowns that i think we're all just trying to address each day as it comes with the idea that hopefully it'll it's all going to go away maybe oh, hopefully in six months if not a year, but then, uh, Susie, I'm optimistic that we would go right back to um, moving forward at a rapid rate to make it, uh, to do everything we've done and we know how to do and just make it better even the next year. Awesome. Well, I'm optimistic too. <laughs> um, we have to be. Yes, we do. And as a matter of fact, as a film festival uh, president, director, and all the experience you've had in film festivals, this is not the only uh, roller co coaster ride that we've been in, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. You know, and I just finished uh, watching a television movie of the film that was the tsunami in, in December 26th of 2004 when they did that film called The Impossible and it was based on a true story of the tsunami that hit Southeast Asia and uh, so many of us remember that because we were working on the film festival in Southeast Asia when, when that happened so there's always there's always something that's happening and that uh, makes a for a challenge of the nonprofit uh, uh, cultural arts organizations but we'll all get through it we'll just keep on trucking. You know, that's a really inspiring movie that you, you just mentioned. We do all, I think everybody needs um, to, while we're self, uh, what is that called? Social spacing and self uh, quarantining yeah, ourselves. Yeah, social distancing, uh-huh. Yes, I think we need to watch some of those movies, keep our hopes up, stay inspired, and be glad that we're not facing tsunamis or anything else right now like that. So... <laughs> That's right. And Susie, I was thinking this morning when, when they were talking to all of us about social distancing, about not uh, hugging or standing too close to people, I think, well, maybe if there's a plus or a light at the end of the tunnel, when this is all over, which it will be at some point, it, the, the hugs that are going to take place are going to become monumental at that point. <laughs> <laughs> They'll last at least 30 seconds longer than they usually that's do. That's exactly right. That's right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you again for your time. 
If you have a few words, I would like to invite our listeners to go to um, heartlandfilm.org. Did I, did I get that right? You certainly did, Susie, and it's always great talking with you and wishing you the best, and let's stay in touch.